What's up guys, Inferno Pear! Now I'm going to be talking about one of the easiest Pokemon games in the entire franchise. Pokemon X and Y. And some of you newbies may be wondering, why is the game so easy? Well, I'll explain to you why the game is so easy. It's because all of the gym leaders are f***ing pushovers! Literally, the gym leaders and the Elite Eat Fort, they are bloody pushovers! Like, it annoys me to no end of how easy this game is. So that's why I thought that I would make it a little bit more difficult. Where I will be changing all of the gym leader and the Elite Four teams. I'll be changing it to make it a little bit more difficult for more experienced players. This would be sort of like a challenge mode, like in Black and White 2. But this is going to be very, very interesting. I feel like if they actually did this to begin with, it would have been a much better game. So be sure to let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of this video, if you would change any of the Pokemon or the movesets, and if you have any video suggestions for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, as we all know, the first gym leader is Viola, the bug type user. I'm not going to make too many changes with her team because, per honestly, I think it's fine as it is for a first gym leader. Like, Surskit and Vivion, definitely good for a first gym leader. I would also give her an, an added Pokemon just to make things a little bit more difficult. So what I would do is give her a Beedrill. I feel like Beedrill would work really well with the theme of her team because, I, like, to me personally, it also, it seems like like the evolution of bug type, not all like actual Pokemon evolution. I'm talking about the evolution in the real world. So that's why I thought Beedrill might be a good member for the team. Obviously, since it's a first time gym leader, the moveset isn't going to be that amazing. So that's why Beedrill's moveset is only going to be inf Infestation, Poison Sting, and Twin Needle. Okay, now we're going to be kicking things off with Grant, the rock type user. Now, I know that he's really into rock climbing, but to me, I feel like the theme of his team are rock types that used to be fossils. Like, literally, his only two Pokemon are Tyrant and Amora. I would keep those Pokemon and the moveset exactly the same. However, we're going to be adding a brand new Pokemon to his team. To keep with the theme of this team, we're going to be using a rock type that also used to be a fossil, and it can also be found close by to the gym. That's why I'm going to be giving him Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl has never been used in a main series story before, so I thought it would be really interesting to see how well it would do in a main series story. Like, the moves that I'm going to be giving this Aerodactyl is Rock Tomb, Wing Attack, and Bite. So it's not that amazing, but at the same time, it's an Aerodactyl. It's OP as hell, so I don't think it's going to really matter. Okay, now we've got Karina, the fighting type user. Now, from here on out, there's going to be some very strange alterations, because I'm going to be completely changing the dialogue and the script of the story. So here's what I'm, I'm thinking. We don't actually fight Lucario after the gym battle. We don't even get the keystone after the gym battle. We get the keystone right after we beat Serena. After we beat Serena, we go straight to the top of the tower. We get the keystone and Karina just gives us Lucario and tells us that it's part of the gym battle. So we need to use Lucario and its Mega Evolution for the gym battle. We do not have a say. So we have to use Lucario no matter what. In fact, you have to select which Pokemon to use right before you have a, the gym battle with Karina. You have to pick only three. And one of them has to be Lucario. But enough about all that. Let's get into the team. Now the team is a little bit different. Because I am not using Mienfu in her team. Because I'm not going to lie. Her Mienfu is irrelevant. Like, we need a Pokemon team that can really do some damage. So that's why we're going to be using Machoke. With the moves, Power Up, Punch, Rock Tomb, Leer, and Payback. So all I really did was add an extra move to it. Then we have Halucha with Home Claws, Flying Press, Power Up, Punch, and Steel Wing. 
Again, I added a move to it just to make it a little bit more challenging. But her third and final Pokemon is going to be Mega Lucario. That's right. From here on out, we are going to be using Pokemon that are capable of Mega Evolving in X and Y. Because they should have done this from the get-go. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the Grass-type user, Ramos. Now, first things first, the Jumpluff needs to go. Like, screw you, Jumpluff, f*** <laughs> off. It is easily the weakest of his team. Then, Weepin' Bell. Yeah, Weepin' Bell can stay, but I'm going to be evolving it into Victory Bell. Because Erica had a Victory Bell, so Ramos gets one. And Go-Go, it can f*** <laughs> off too. So first things first, we've got the Victory Bell, but its moveset is going to have a very drastic change. We're going to be giving it Grass Knot, Sludge Bomb, Sunny Day, and Venoshock. Which means we're going to be running Pokemon with the ability Chlorophyll, or at least Pokemon that can benefit the sun very well. The second Pokemon is a Trevenant, with Grass Knot, Shadow Claw, Bulldoze, and Sunny Day. And the final Pokemon is also going to be a Mega. But since there is only one... I think there's only one... As far as I know, there's only one grass type Mega Evolution. That's right, we could be giving the guy a Mega Venusaur. As you, some of you may know, I loved Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. But one of the things I liked about it is that there were some trainers that actually had the evolutionary forms for the starter Pokemon. I personally really like that aspect. I really like that uniqueness of the Pokemon games. So that's why I thought it would be fun to bring it into this game too. So for Mega Venusaur's moveset, we will be going with Grass Knot, Sludge Bomb, Solar Beam, and Bulldoze. That sounds like a very powerful Pokemon considering Venusaur's also packing thick fat. Okay, now I'm going to be going over the Electric type user, Clement. His team is very, very different. Like, his Emolga and Magneton, they go bye-bye. We are keeping Heliolisk though. We've got two new Pokemon to add to his team, and they make the game very, very difficult. We are keeping Heliolisk, but it's no longer the ace of the team. Doesn't mean it's not as strong. However, it's a lot stronger actually. Like this thing is packing Thunderbolt, Razor Wind, Grass Knot, and Dragon Tail. Like this thing is a beast. However, it's the other two Pokemon that's gonna make the gym challenge is a little bit more difficult. Um, the Pokemon that he is going to bring out first is actually Dedene. Because like, I thought it would be fun to give him a Dedene like, to homage the anime. Because Clement caught Dedene in the anime so that way Bonnie can have it when she's older. So I thought it would be fun to give him a Dedene in the gym team. And this thing is packing Thunderbolt, Play Rough, Thunder Wave and Rest. Just to be a bit of an annoyer really. But the ace of his team, you need to watch out for. Because I'm going to give him a bloody Mega Ampharos. At this point in time, Amph Mega Ampharos is, po is probably going to be a beast. Because it's a dragon type, an electric type, and it's practically indestructible at this point. Because I'm going to give him a very powerful moveset. Thunderbolt and Dragon Pulse, obviously. But the other two moves, I'm going to be using this to help cripple the opponent's speed. So the other two moves I'm going to give it are Cotton Sport and Thunder Wave. So that way it will be slower in comparison to Mega Ampharos. That way Mega Ampharos can outspeed and overpower. Alright, now I'm going to be talking about Valerie, the Fairy type user. Her team is going to be somewhat similar, but at the same time, different. Because we're going to be keeping two members of her team, that being Sylveon and Marwile. However, the roles are going to be flipped, and Marwile's going to be the ace of the team. And Sylveon is just backup. But the brand new Pokemon I'm going to be giving Valerie, that's what's going to put her over the edge. I'm going to be giving her a Florges. I thought it would be fun to give her a Florges, because... I guess it, she looks like that she's wearing a dress, like, and plus, Valerie is also a fashion designer in the anime. And I feel like, since 
uh, her kimono looks somewhat similar to Florgit's body type. I feel like Florgit would be a good candidate for her team. But the moveset I'm going to give it... Deadly. For Florgit's moveset, we're going to be giving it Dazzling Gleam, Moonblast, Hidden Power Ground, and Calm Mind. For Sylveon's uh, moveset, we are also are going to be giving it Dazzling Gleam, but we're also going to be adding Hyper Voice, Shadow Ball, and Psy Shock. Now you're probably wondering, why Hyper Voice? Well, we're going to be giving Sylveon its hidden ability, Pixelate. So that means any normal type moves turn into fairy type moves. So that means Hyper Voice is going to gain Stab. And oh boy, is it going to pack a punch. And as I'm sure you uh, have expected, we're going to be turning Marwile into Mega Marwile. And its moveset's going to be the most drastic change of all. Because its moveset in the X and Y games are trash. So we're going to be changing it up. So that means Marwile's new moveset is now Play Rough, Iron Head, Sucker Punch, and Rock Slide. As you can see, I want on this to be a challenge and a half. Because this is the first ever gym leader that introduced fairy type Pokemon. We need to um, make it aware that fairy types are beasts. And to be honest with you, they did a terrible job at it with Valerie. So this is why I believe that if we use this team with this moveset, we can make fairy types look OP as hell. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the psychic type user, Olympia. This is going to be interesting because from here on out, Olympia and Wolfric now have four Pokemon to handle. Now, I believe that when it comes to the last two gym leaders, they need to have the most amount of Pokemon possible. Like, to me, the weaker gym leaders have three Pokemon, or maybe two, and then the last two gym leaders should have four Pokemon max. And I believe that that would make things a lot more difficult, especially with the team of movesets I've given her team. Meowstic and Sigilyph are staying, but we're going to be getting rid of Slowking and adding two new members to the team. I'm going to be talking about the newest member of the team first. So first off, I want to send out Malamar, because I feel like Malamar would actually be pretty decent for her team, because most of her Pokemon, like they're sort of like the good guy psychic types. I want a bad guy psychic type, and this guy is going to be packing a punch. Because I'm also going to be giving Malamar the ability Contrary, which means, say a if the stats, as the user move where its stats go down, it'll do the opposite effect. So that means its stats will go up. And that is going to make the game a lot more difficult. Malamar's moveset is Psycho Cut, Night Slash, Super Power, and Flamethrower. Meowstick's moveset is going to be staying the same, however, it's no longer the ace. So its moveset is Psychic, Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Fake Out. Sigilyph's moveset is going to be changing slightly as well. Its Sigilyph's new moveset is now Psychic, Air Slash, Calm Mind, and Shadow Ball. Olympia's final Pokemon is going to be a doozy of an ace. Because we're going to be using a freaking Mega Alakazam. This will be by far the greatest challenge yet. Because not only is Mega Alakazam OP... It's got high special attack and high speed, and its moveset is deadly. Because this guy is packing Psychic, Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Psy Shock. So that means you're going to be struggling against an OP Mega Evolution. The final gym leader is the Ice-type user, Wolfric. Now he says in the game himself that Ice is fragile yet hard. So depending on your Pokemon and moveset, I could be your greatest challenge yet, or a complete pushover. Unfortunately, in the games, he's a complete pushover. But, with this new team, I think he may give you a bit more of a challenge. First off, we're going to be leading with Mamoswine. And mainly because I want Onto to give him a bit more of a powerful Ice-type user. And Mamoswine is definitely a powerful Ice-type user. Plus... It's nearby, so he could easily just go oh, past well, the nearest place and get a pile of swine and evolve it into mammoth swine. I don't get why he didn't have one in his team in the first place. The moveset for mammoth swine is a deadly one. Because we are going to be giving it 
Avalanche, Earthquake, Light Screen, and Reflect. So that means Mammoth Swine is going to be setting up while attacking at the same time. So that means Mammoth Swine is pretty decent. Like, if we e use it for attacking and defense, like, it's just the perfect Pokemon to be starting out with. His second Pokemon is going to be a Weavile, mainly because we need a Pokemon that can actually pull its weight as an Ice-type user, and Weavile certainly does that. It has the moves Avalanche, Night Slash, Aerial Ace, and Brick Break. His third Pokemon is going to be Avalug, no longer the Ace, and its moveset is Ice Beam, Avalanche, Curse, and Gyro Ball. And as I'm sure you've guessed, the ace of Wolfric's team is going to be Mega Obama Snow, just like in the anime. And its moveset is pretty decent. Because we're packing Ice Beam, Energy Ball, Blizzard, and Earthquake. So it's going to uh, cover almost all of its weaknesses. That's pretty decent. Before we get into the Elite Four, I have to be honest with you, I did not give move sets to these Pokemon. Mainly because that these teams are so powerful, I don't really need to give them a set move set. So be imaginative with the, these Pokemon for move sets because like these Pokemon are so broken, I don't really think I need to explain the breakdown for their move sets. There's one more thing I would like to point out. These gym leaders are going to be challenged in a certain order. So it's sort of like the succession order for um, back in gens 1 through 4. You face one and then you go on to the next one, but the next one is more of a challenge, meaning it has higher level Pokemon. I prefer that method to what they currently do because I just feel like it makes the game a lot more challenging. Let's start things off with Wickstrom. Wickstrom's brand new team is Clefki, Escavalier, Aegislash, Aggron, and a Mega Scizor. As you can see, I have gotten rid of Probo Pass for Escavalier because I feel like Escavalier would work so much better with Wickstrom's theme since he's sort of a knight. And I've also added Aggron to the team because mainly because like his forehead kind of looks like a, a lance of sorts. And yeah, I thought it would work pretty well for his team. And as you can see, I made his Scizor Mega Evolve. So I feel like this would uh, work fairly well for his team. Like this could easily be done in X and Y and it would make the game a lot more challenging too. Razna's new team is Dragalge, Altaria, Haxorus, Noivern, and a Mega Garchomp. As you can see, three of her um, Pokemon are exactly the same as the last team. However, I swapped her Drudigan for a Haxorus because I feel like Haxorus would be able to do a lot more damage than a, well, a Drudigan, you know? And then I also threw in a Mega Garchomp because I want this to be powerful. Like, Dragon type users are supposed to be the strongest types users ever. And yet, Drasna is a bloody pushover. So, if we give her three pseudo legendaries, one of which can Mega Evolve, it's going to be hard to take down. Seabold's new team is Clawitzer, Sharpedo, Gyarados, Barbarical, and a Mega Blastoise. As you can see, Clawitzer, as well as Gyarados, and Barbarical made this team as well. However, we swapped out Starmie for or, um, Sharpedo because, you know, we needed more power and Starmie wasn't doing the job. And Blastoise, well... Just because he had a Mega Blastoise in the anime, and I feel like if we give him a Mega Blastoise in this game, it would just be OP, you know? And finally, for Mulva's team, we are running a Pyroar, Talonflame, Chandelure, Ro a Rotom Heat, and a Mega Houndoom. Pyroar, Chandelure, and Talonflame are staying exactly as they are. I swapped out Torkoal for Rotom Heat because since it's part electric type, it can handle any water type weaknesses. And I threw in Mega Houndoom because, well, Malva had one in the anime. And I feel like it would fit in well with her uh, theme because she is an ex member of Team Plasma. And there we guys. Hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you thought this game was a little bit more challenging. If you liked the teams I made. If you would change any of the teams or the movesets. And if you have any video suggestions for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below.
Did you enjoy the video as much as I did? If you did, be sure to give it a massive thumbs up, comment down below, share this video with a friend, and if you're new, subscribe to my channel, it's been an Inferno today. Okay, that's all from me, so until the next time, this is Inferno, signing off. Bye!